Hello everybody, this is Tom from Tom and Ruth Podcast. How's everybody doing today? Today I want to talk about something uh, that is uh, something that's very important uh, to me and what's going on. Today I've not talked about this. I did another video earlier and it didn't, <laughs> it didn't turn out well. I had the speaker or something turned off and it was a nightmare trying to get that thing worried about. It's hot here today. It. I'm in... Uh, Maramug, it is uh, in between CDO and Davo in the Philippines. It's probably, uh, uh, it feels like it's 150 degrees, but it's about 90 degrees out there today. But that sun is hot. We're close to the equator, as you know, and it gets really hot. I'm doing a live stream on my Podbean also. A lot of people uh, like listening to that instead of watching the video going down the road. They can listen to Sirius Radio and uh, Samsung and this is on all the platforms uh, so if you decided you want to find Tom and Ruth all you have to do is search Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures and you're on Spotify you're on everything so uh, you guys can find me there uh, real easy to find uh, today I want to talk about homelessness uh, in the Philippines compared to the United States of America I think sometimes we all forget and we get a grasp on things and the country is great and it's a great place to visit, but sometimes Americans say to me, I am so tired of the beggars. Well, you know what? You're coming to a country that's had a lot of turmoil, a lot of things has happened. If you guys know what's been happening in the United States in the last uh, year or so, um, it's been qu you know quite complicated that way because a storm sitting in Florida and what's going on there and the life loss is such a horrible thing. and. May the families be blessed uh, because I hate hearing things like that. Here presently, as of in 2020, the st statistics are kind of slow on coming up, but there's half a million people, actually 600,000, I'll just say. It's 582,462 as of 2020, and I know that's probably increased up to at least a million people that is, are homeless in the United States of America. 30% of the people or without homes or experience, experience in homelessness. They've been without homes for more than 12 months is how they made sure that they did this study. And their extended periods of time homelessness. Uh, more states saw their homeless population rise since 2019, including uh, that doubled in Delaware, Vermont, Louisiana, and Maine. 16% uh, are close to the poverty line according to the statistics there in the states. Now, we all know that everybody has that problem and a lot of states are worse than the others. A lot of Florida has a lot of homeless there because people filter out of the states from the north to the south because of the warmer weathers. Uh, and you can understand why. Who wants to sit up there in snow and freeze to death, right? So, I want to talk a little bit about that. We know that sometimes Americans get this idea in their head when they come here to the Philippines that, okay, we're going to get out of the homelessness there, a lot of trouble in the states, but yet they're going into a bigger pot. They're going into a pot that's much deeper and much bigger and actually more problems than you ever thought of. 20% uh, of the population here in the Philippines live under the poverty line <clears throat> with a population of 120 million uh, people here in the Philippines. A study was done. Seven thousand, <coughs> excuse me, seven thousand six hundred forty-one islands, and they, they have a lot of mountains here, as you know, and a lot of farmland, a lot of things that uh, that is here that that we know that we we find that is can be quite uh, mountainous, and there's people that have these small homes up on these mountains, but you'll find in <clears throat> I did. I could not believe this. Close to five million, five million Filipinos are living in unsustainable abilities conditions, lack of safeties, laying on the streets, laying in corners and alleys. They don't have access to clean water and safe sanitation. More than. Seven million housing units are needed by 2022, and they did not figure that that's going to be up towards 
uh, close to 15 to 20 million by uh, 2030. If they don't figure out the housing situation, it is the fire belt for homelessness here. You have to really look at the statistics. Now these statistics are, you just get them online, they're through um, PSA. So you can actually look at the Filipino families that are living. Now, I know this for traveling and living here for a period of time. We went to go to the beach in Davao and there's no beach because it's homeless live on the beach there. They cleaned it all up, got rid of the homeless. Where they put them, I have no idea. When you get rid of homeless, what happens? They just transfer another area. I mean, uh, homeless is homeless. What they do here in the city, they actually load them up on dump trucks and they take them out of the city and take them up in the mountains and uh, let them uh, find a place and secure. So they'll round them up here and take them to the city. Whatever it is, if they have to make two or three truckloads and uh, these big, what they call wing vans, you know, 20, 25, 30 foot vans that holds a lot of people and you just fill them full and take them out of the communities. Valencia and, and Malai Balai has a large abundance, uh, it does here too, I mean, there's not, you can go to town right now, you can easily see a few hundred uh, around, all over, all over. I'm not just talking in the city, I'm talking all over, uh, scattered in the communities, scattered all over in cubby holes, uh, looking for fresh water, looking for a place to stay. And sometimes Americans gets bothered and they get bothered by it because they find themselves saying, oh, I don't want to be bothered. Uh, I'm bothered about uh, giving uh, money to the poor. Well, a lot of times it's the only food they have. You have to distinguish between there's, I consider it two different, uh, two different uh, styles of homelessness here. You got one that what's called mountain people that are beggars that come down on the mountains. But they have homes up in the mountains, but they come down and stay here for a few months and gather money up and then go back up the mountains. Some end up staying here all the time and just are part of the homelessness. Then you got homelessness that just happened because the storms have come through and knocked their houses down and there's no money available and no, no, no ways of fixing their houses if family does not help them. And some of them live in huts that they don't own the housing. They don't own the lot and they just put up these huts in these lots and put them up wherever they can on the side of the road and put them up wherever they can actually find a, a small square piece. There's many where you drive down a road going to CDL and Davo and even up in Luzon, up in the uh, Bohol areas, where they just have them on the side of the road where a guy's sleeping in a little hut in a hammock. And it's a guy and his wife and daughter, and it's four feet by four feet square. And they're scattered like that. And so you're going to find that all over. And of course, uh, the government is working on helping them as much as they can. The communities do help, and people do help as much as they can. But as you know, when you've got five or six million uh, people that are homeless here, uh, and it's probably more than what I'm stating, compared to half a million in the states, even if the states got to one million or two million, it's still three, four, five times the amount of 120 million people here. If you look at this statistics, if you say it's six million or seven million or even five million people that's out of the homes here and you got 120, it's just say that's going to be five, six percent of the people are homeless here. Compared to the states, it's probably not even going to reach a, a 0.1%. So there's more homeless families that are actually homeless. And these are statistics that they can come up with here. And they're far short because storms have hit and uh, catastrophes have hit. Things have hit and caused this to be uh, really bad for them. And I feel so sad for a lot of communities. The Philippines is the fire belt and it is the uh, toughest area because they're in the Typhoon Alley. It's a highly prone to tropical cyclones, storms, floods. Uh, usually four million displacements disasters recorded in 2020. And at 4.4 million people have just lost their homes completely, and that's in 2020, uh, affected by conflict. 11,000, 111,000 uh, were put back into homes, but that's it. <clears throat> they could not find enough homes, they could not find enough stuff to keep the people sustained enough that they could actually have a life in the future. I feel so sad for it, but I want to do this study. People are talking about coming to the Philippines and they were saying how great it is, but they don't 
uh, really take a look at you're going to may get bombarded and you're going to get bombarded about people maybe wanting money but I want everybody to not be so uh, negative or down toward them I mean I had quite a few people saying what's up with all the beggars and the reason there's so many beggars is because they're homeless and they have no place to go and they have no homes and they've been displaced because of the storms and just because of life in general sometimes family move away and leave their families and leave them forever and never come back that happens a lot you'd be surprised son daughter tired of the poor they go to the city and they never come back and that's happened we have a couple in the church that their their sons and daughters are gone and they're there alone and they did the best they could on raising them and they're alone now they're in their elderly age in their 70s and so don't think that kids don't leave here uh, and they do uh, because the parents in poverty and things like that you know no it's not perfect here either people portray it as perfect but it's not it's just a it's life it's the way life works it's the way the culture is and the way things are worked that way and the way people um, uh, live and it's just reality so take a look at the Philippines don't get so mad about it. if you get bombarded with people wanting money uh, I get bombarded uh, so there's there's not a time that I'll get 10 15 people ask me if I'm walking across town you have to be very careful children especially and because the, a lot of the beggars send out their children because either they're not able and they send the children out four five eight ten and they go in groups be careful where you put your money they're great pickpockets be careful what you do be careful where you go be careful where you walk it's just common sense in the Philippines common sense you don't really take don't take things for granted things are aren't always as they seem to be and don't think that just because you're outside the United States it's going to be wonderful sometimes it's safer in the states than it ever is here in the Philippines depending on where you live and where you go guys will tell me they feel a lot safer here but I don't know where that where they lived in the states that it was unsafe I don't know where they would have unsafe issues in the states and let their unless they're living somewhere that is really a drug heaven or something like that if uh, because you can there's many communities throughout the United States that you can live there's there are, in fact, I just uh, uh, watched uh, top 20 uh, uh, cities to live with a very few police force. And, you know, populations is five to 8,000, 10,000 people in the states. They don't have any police force, one or two people. And they don't have any problem. But here, they have police force. They have problem here. It's just like it is anywhere else. God bless everybody. And thank you so much for always watching my videos. And thank you so much for spending your valuable time. Uh, we appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time on Tom and Ruth Podcast.